Mike Pond and Maureen Palmer joining us right here. Jody's got the book in her hand. It is called Wasted. There is a documentary surrounding this too. And this really delves into the idea of addiction and relapse. Maureen, let's start with you. When you're uh, analyzing this and the research you found, how did this shift your perspective on addiction as we know it? Well, I think the biggest thing I learned was, well, two things. Never, never shame and blame and humiliate somebody who's having a relapse because if they do that, it's beyond their control. We saw in the documentary that neuroscience has taught us, if you do something 100 times on your computer, the computer won't change. If you do something 100 times in your brain, or 1,000 or 10,000 times, the structure, the actual structure of your brain changes. So willpower becomes a biological issue. That's what happens when drugs and alcohol hijack the reward circuitry in the brain. Fascinating article in the province newspaper and reflected in your book. Um, Mike, tell us a little bit about um, how you used to start your seminars as, a, as an addiction therapist, being able to tell people, I've been sober? Well, we were talking about that the other day. I've been sober five and a half years and I would get resounding applause. Well, I can't say that anymore right? right? because of my relapse in, on February 9th. And I had the typical response that when you relapse, we don't even call it relapse anymore. We've yeah, changed the term. Call it recurrence. Let's call it recurrence right. or I just drank again. Um, but you guys were working on a project. Yes. And in, then you had an accident, right motorcycle mid, accident? Uh, yeah, I was on my Harley and a guy pulled out from the back uh, lane. I smashed into him and split my face open and uh, ended up in ER. And I found out you know, it was traumatic for me to go to ER because I'd been to ER 31 times <clears throat> when my drinking was really severe. And just that accident, going to ER, remembering flashbacks of how I was treated. Even my ex-wife in the film, she says how awful it was for her to take me to ER. Shamed by the doctors, the nurses, the staff. Yeah, she could hear them talking and murmuring and making comments. Oh, here he is again. And we're so busy. We've got people with real, you know, medical problems here. And here's Michael Pond again. Well, a lot of this has to do with some of the flaws that you point out with the 12-step system when you look at traditional AA. And what are some of these learnings and in terms of findings with the research of how to effectively recover instead of the traditional 12-step system? It's not AA's fault. I mean, their program is their program and it works for 30% on average after one year. And that is on average what most things have a success rate of. But the reality is, AA has been so successful in spreading its word, everybody thinks it's the only go-to well, thing. Well, years. Yeah, and mm -hmm. especially our doctors. There's a lot of doctors in Canada who send people to an AA meeting and are ignorant of or ignore the fact there are other evidence-based treatments. Dr. Evan Wood, who's also in the film, says on average 10 percent, probably closer to 1 percent of Canadians are getting evidence-based compassionate care. They're getting, they're getting treated by lay people. And this is what uh, is sort of the resounding message of your article that, that sort of launches. We're going to talk about the nature of things uh, that's airing tonight, right, 8 o'clock, yes. um, which delves deeper into all of this. <laughs> we can only cover so much in just a handful of minutes here. But what resonates here is that you're not going on a spiral all the way to rock bottom necessarily, but what will take you there is the shame and the need to hide. When I woke up the next morning, I was ready to pack my bags. I was back there again, right? Oh man, I've done it again, I've blown it again, I'm such a loser. Lost everything Lost because your whole life was based five on... Five and a half years, yeah. blown. Yeah. And I was packing my bags because that's what I was expecting. And I was Googling Bellingham Vivitrol, which was this, it is a 30-day injectable that's available only in the U.S., but currently on trial here at St. Paul's Hospital. It's a 30-day injectable, and for Mike, it, re it removed the cravings, the agitation. Like he said, it's, when it's we were an driving back, that's it. That's what it was first designed or developed for. But they also found that it works for alcohol cravings uh, and urges. So I had that injection, and by the time we hit the border in, what, 45 minutes, I could feel a difference. I could feel myself settling. I could feel the cravings just 
disappearing. It was quite remarkable. You'll see in the doc that there's a unique reason why it worked so well for him. We had yeah. five shots, and towards the end of the four weeks, there'd be a little bit of craving. Well, day 26, I would start to feel that that angst coming back. Mm -hmm. It was quite well, a lot of great research and findings uh, have come from this documentary, and it's an interesting platform going website, book, and documentary. Your chance to view this is tonight. You just saw the details on screen and on the nature of things. Congrats to you two for some groundbreaking research with this. And uh, empathy is the key word that comes yes. out uh, in terms of recovery. So thanks Action, for sharing the message. Kindness and science. Hit that website if you want more information on addiction. The next step .com, It's the place to go. Thank you for coming Thank back you. here. You told me in the green room <laughs> that. There was a jumping off spot, spot that started with BT. We got the Nature of Things documentary because they, they saw us, saw on, us on breakfast television with, with Jody. Jody a couple of years ago. They, they were on vacation. <laughs> you missed it. Thank you very I'm, much. Yeah. We're I proud of you. Good. We're proud of you. Thank you for your openness you. and honesty for, you. for somebody who has a, a addiction issues in their family. This is important, not just for the person going through it, but for the person that loves them, right?